Welcome to our guide on how to open a SIP on the Vanguard website. Yay! There's two things that we should say before we get into this. Firstly, we are not sponsored by Vanguard. Although we're open to it, Vanguard <laughs> messages. We don't get any commission from doing this. We are just fans of their service and we want to help you understand how to use their website and get started with investing. Lots of people come on Rebel Finance School, the course, and then they try and do this and they're like, I don't understand all these elements. So we wanted to do this walkthrough guide to opening a SIP to help you get on top of it. So let's go. I'm excited. Hang on, I've had two things that I wanted to say. Oh, what's the second? The second one is we are not financial advisors. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. This is our opinion and we just want to help. Can we start now? We can, can start, we start now. now. Let's go. You're very keen, aren't Open you? Open an account. So we've gone to the website vanguardinvestor.co.uk. This is the homepage and right up front it says open an account. So let's do that. We already have an existing Vanguard account, which if you've watched our How to Open a Nicer video, you've seen us create that. So we're going to log in to our existing Vanguard account. Uh, and then it's going to ask us what account type we want, which is very exciting. No, it's logged us into our existing ISA that you already have, your existing account. So that's it good has. to know. So. Oh, what do we do now? We want to open a new account. Open a new so you account. can see here, this is the sort of the screen that you see initially when you log into your Vanguard account. And as Alan said, he already invested in an ISA. So that's why he already has an account. So check that one out if you want to understand how to sort of get set up with Vanguard in the first place. So if so you let's... do have an existing account set up, just click through this, go to open new account. If you don't, you'll have to go through the process to actually open up an account. Then it will take you to this screen anyway, which shows you the different types of accounts you can get. So you can see you've got personal pension. That's the one we're going to open Which today. is a SIP, self-invested personal pension. You can see the other options are stocks and shares ISA. We don't actually have the option open an account because Alan has already done that. He already has an account. And then it's general account, which is what you would use if you've already used up all of your SIP and ISA allowances and a junior ISA is for young people under the age of I believe 16. So Alan, uh, this is what I do? want. I want a personal pension. Just before we do, transfer to Vanguard. If you have a pension somewhere else that you don't like what you've got, you can transfer it into Vanguard. So you would use that button to move in different people's pensions. But we're going to open a brand new one. Different so let's people's just do it. pensions. Presumably it's your Well, pensions. your pension, but with different <laughs> providers. Yeah. Well, so then you never know. Take anyone's. An Go. Open account. So here we are. Thinking about it. Apply for a Vanguard pension. Uh, I am 44 years old. That is correct. I planned it like interesting. I don't so know they, why they need to know this. But because what? they want to help predict what you're going to have. Like just put standard retirement age for now, even though I've already been retired for four years. That will confuse them. So do you mean the state retirement age, which is 65? Yeah. Let's, because is it 65? I thought mine was 68. Oh, we can look this up. But I think mine's it's 65. 68. Okay. <laughs> 65 is fine. Just put in an age that you're aiming to retire. They use that to build the calculators and the projections for you to show you what they are. So we filled that in and then uh, it says your retirement age can be changed any time after opening your account. So that's fine. Things to know, you must be a UK resident with no other tax residency. So we take that box. Once you've invested, you can't normally access the funds before age 55. So you couldn't put anything lower than 55 here anyway. Um, and then it's saying that they're not giving uh, investment advice. Uh, and then it says, choose how you would like to pay into your pension. Is it you, meaning you're making a personal contribution? Is it your company? So the only way that this is possible to do is if you own your own limited company and then you can pay into your Vanguard SIP through your company or is it a third party and it says um, payments in excess of 2,880 may not be eligible for tax relief. So the main two, well, the main one that most people will be doing is, is this personally. personal. So it's you as an individual putting money into your pension. So let's go for that one. And you can see underneath, it's kind of reassuring you that you can do the other options later if you need to. It says you can add payments from other sources after you've opened your account. The so let's, let's click you. Let's click select. The current SIP allowances are uh, 60 grand a year or at a maximum of your PAYE, your personal amount you earn. So those are the two limits that you have. 
So I okay. press select. I actually didn't press it properly and it pinged me up to the top, but I properly pressed it this time. <laughs> so it says you're going to need your details to be able to pay into card. your got account. Got my card. I like that you hid yes, the numbers. Yes, I've got to hide the numbers. <laughs> YouTube, you do not need to know my bank details. Let's get started. Yes. It's very kind of encouraging, isn't I it? I know. The, well, now we get a lot of text because there are actually a lot of rules around SIPs and different things. So here we go. So make sure that you read this properly. So it's saying it's up to you. You, We're not, we Vanguard are not giving you investment we're advice. We're not advising you and neither um, are the Donegans. No, neither are the Donegans. Um, so it's saying think about your investment goals, when you plan to retire, how much you'll need in retirement. And if you want to do that, come on Rebel Finance School because we guide you through all of the thoughts and the questions to be able to do that. Yeah. And so then it's got these two main options. It says, do you want to select a target retirement fund? And it kind of tells you why they think you might want to do that. Or do you want to select your own funds? And it says it allows you to build your own portfolio. A target so, retirement fund basically takes the date you want to retire and then splits you between bonds and shares and that auto readjusts over the time. We are not fans of these funds. You can watch our separate video about that, but we would steer clear of target retirement funds. And it's interesting because Vanguard's kind of steering you into this one mm -hmm. because it's on the left hand side and we kind of read left to right. So it's it's almost saying like that's the one to go for, isn't it? But we disagree. We think you can do it on your own. You don't need this target retirement fund. So I'm going to press select this one. That's what we want. So now it says, OK, let's start building your pension portfolio. And it says you can choose an, as many investments as you like. You don't need to do that. You can just do this. Uh, it's very straightforward to do it on your own. If you've been to Rebel Finance School, you'll understand why we say that. And if you haven't been to Rebel Finance School and you don't understand some of the terms we're using, do that first. You should not be investing if you don't understand what you're doing. It's the quickest way to lose some money. Uh, there's some things I'm a little bit thinking about here, like they've got target retirement 2045 fund accumulation. Like that's the one they're actually trying to guide you into. We want to avoid that. So let's work down this and see what they've got. So what's the source of your money? The reason they ask this is this is a tax advantaged way of investing, meaning there's special tax rules around it. So they want to make sure that you they want to understand where it's coming from. So we're going to say salary or income for employment because that's what it is. So that's nice and simple. There are other options. You can choose a house sale, whatever. Just choose the option that fits. Employment status. I am technically I'm employed by you my limited company currently. Um, so now this is where we then come to choosing the fund. This is where they're a bit cheeky as well, because what have they put at the top? These blended funds. So there's the life strategy fund, which has different amounts of equity investment in them. They're so also says, very heavily home country bias, which yes, we hate. That's why Alan did his big crossing of the arms. Stay away. So you can see it has different levels of equity in them and the balance will be in bonds. And even this 100% equity um will have a lot weighted towards the UK and you can check out our separate video that we'll do about life strategy funds as well. Basically so, avoid, avoid. So, and blended funds uh, is between stocks and shares and bonds. Yes. Did we already say that? Yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> avoid it. Keep going. Um, miss this. So we're going to avoid that. We're going to avoid target retirement We hate funds. that. You have to scroll down quite a lot until you get to global, global. funds. But again, this is um, having a certain split between equities and bonds. So I want to keep going. And actually, before you do, yeah. like what they're a little bit cheeky is they put all of these funds at the top yes. and then you have to press plus to get to the one we would actually think is a good environment uh, investment. So that's they not are. A, that's not advice. Is it's it? not that's advice, but that's just what we invest in. Um, but like what I want to say, this is really cheeky because this is why we're doing this video, because most people will go, oh, I'll just pick one of those first ones. Yes. And something like 99 percent of people pick the default. Like, do not pick the default option in your pensions is probably the worst thing you can do in life. So let's have a look at equity funds. And you think, OK, we've already gone through the like the 19 ones that that we don't want to go for. And now we're into equity funds and within that 38. So I just press this sort of plus button to open up those different options. And we can see, OK, Europe, 
do you want to just invest in European companies? The answer, in my opinion, is no. You want to invest in a globally diversified index fund. So yeah. we're going to ignore the European ones. We're going actually, to ignore Germany. We're going to ignore all of that. Then it takes us to global. So actually now we're into global. And that's where we want to look at. But I'm just going to scroll down a bit further so you can see what the other options are that we're not going to look at. Just so you can see the extent of the options here and how we just want to hone in the ones that we want. So we also had UK, which means just investing in the UK. Don't invest in the UK, despite what the Chancellor of Exchequer wants you to do. So, I mean, by all means, invest in the UK as part of a global fund. But we're putting... like The UK is 3.9% of the world economy based on the global fund. You should not be investing more than 3.9% of your money in the UK. Exactly. And then we've got Japan. So that's just investing in Japanese companies, Asia Pacific, USA. Emerging markets is countries that don't have as developed an economy or just coming up. So China, Brazil, India, um other countries that aren't coming to mind right now. <laughs> and then we've come to the end of that little section fixed income funds means bonds and we're just looking at stocks and shares for now so let's go back up to these global funds and even within the global funds we've got how many have we got here three six nine ten eleven twelve different funds that you can invest in and you can see you know ESG How funds. We, the need for this video to yeah. help you to navigate. It's very this. confusing. So we've got ESG funds, ethical, social, and governance. Governance. Did I, get that right? I think so. But just avoid the ESG funds. You can watch our video about ESG funds, but we would not be going for those. Um, uh, and then there's different ETFs. We um, exchange so, traded funds. Yeah, we don't have anything against ETFs. We go we for just index don't do funds. Them. So ETFs, you can trade very quickly. You can trade instantaneously. And actually, we see that as a disadvantage because we're in this forever. We're buy and hold We don't strategy need to trade forever. quickly. Exactly. We don't so, want to make split second decisions. We want to go slowly. So the two that we look at are the FTSE Developed World XUK Equity Index Fund and the FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund. And you can see it says accumulation. That means that there's two types of index funds you can invest in. There's accumulation and income. Accumulation means that any dividends that you're entitled to are automatically reinvested in the fund. Income means that they're paid out as cash. And actually you might be thinking, well, I can't see any income ones here. That's because if we scroll all the way back to the top, whoops, went too far. It says show funds that pay you income. So if yes. you wanted an income fund, you would click on this and does it then include both? Let's have a look. Yes, you Which can in see it general, says accumulation income. You only really want the income funds when you're living off your portfolio. You want the accumulation when you're building your portfolio because yeah. it auto reinvests and then you have no temptation to spend your dividends on a Ferrari or something. You auto invest them and look after your future. So you can see that Vanguard's been actually quite useful here and has given you this toggle to be able to exclude those ones because otherwise it doubles the list because each fund will have accumulation and income options. So I'm going to turn that off. We want accumulation. We want Do our money to keep close, going round. Close down this blended funds bit. Okay, now we're back into the equity funds. We're into global. So as I just said, we've got these two other ones. Should we do the FTSE Global All Cap for this sure. one? So uh, we are going to do a single payment of five hundred pounds. Five hundred pounds. Let's invest. And uh, you just press continue. I guess. I think there's confirm. at the bottom here. It says oh, it says confirm investment. I'm just trying to look behind the it camera. It says confirm investment. And so we're I'm going to confirm. To press go on that and let's see what happens okay it's oh, going straight, straight to payment it. they want my cash so let's so, do this katie let's do this okay and then it says review and submit your details so it's saying are you is this what you want to go for are you going for the FTSE Glo global all cap index fund accumulation and you can click on this document to see what it is that you're investing in which you should definitely do you should definitely read all the things that they ask you and encourage you to read this is important. This is stuff for your financial future, so it's important. And we'll do another video reviewing the key investor documents that you can actually see what it is. You can see the ongoing fund, uh, ongoing charge, sorry. And we've said that we're putting in £500. And then the next line is the exciting Ooh, bit. So tax relief. How does this work, Alan? They've actually got a little... Um, we will claim back basic rate tax at 20% from HMRC, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, and add this to your pension. His this, Majesty. His Majesty. This means that if you pay a contribution of £60, we claim 80. back a further £20 
for gross contribution. If you're a higher tax rate payer, you can claim additional tax relief through your tax return, which is really important. SIPs are particularly beneficial if you are in the higher tax rate. So the reason that they are able to claim this tax relief is because of the way that SIPs work. When you invest in a SIP with money before tax, but because this is a personal contribution, this is money that Alan's already paid tax on as part of his income. So when you put the money in, they say, oh, whoops, sorry, you should not have paid tax on that. So let me give you the tax back that you would have paid on that. So Alan would have had to earn £625 to get his £500. So they say, oh, whoops, actually, let me give you that tax back to invest. And Vanguard does all of that behind the scenes for you. You don't need to do anything to get that money unless you're in a higher rate taxpayer, in which case you do need to claim back the additional amount of tax that you would have paid on that £500. Then when I actually retire and live off this money, I will pay income tax on what comes out of that. Uh, so this is this is interesting. How much will my pension be? So they've got an illustration of what it will be uh, in the future. Let's have a look at that. It'll tell me how much my £500 will be when I actually get to where I get to. Uh, so here is our bit. It's got an introduction, etc, etc. It's got my details, which will be blanked out because you don't need to know <laughs> how old I am. There's the fund we've invested in, how much we've put in. If you did regular payments, it would add those up. The fees, the investment charges and the ongoing fees, how much interest it pays you, what they base their calculations on, which we could do an entire video on this. It's quite <laughs> complex. Uh, and then you sort of scroll down and it says, OK, if you invest this much and just leave it, at retirement, it will be worth £1,000. Woo! <laughs> uh, they've assumed our investments will grow at 2.9% each year after we've applied inflation of 2%, which is kind of crazy low. And it's also why we don't trust any of these documents, really, because it's just based it's on just guessing. fiction and yeah, guessing. It's just guessing what things might grow to. Um, and then they sort of said that here, haven't they? They've, choos they've chosen three different potential growth rates, um, a lower, meaning it would lose money or negative growth after inflation, a medium amount of growth and a higher amount. So these are just kind of guesses that Vanguard have said, have said, OK, if things if the market performs, you know, returns these different amounts, what it might grow to. And it's interesting because that actual fund has grown more than 10% a year. So they're very pessimistic on the figures they apply to what you're doing. Very pessimistic. And if you want to work out how to figure out how much your own things might grow to, we did a workshop called Forecasting Your Financial Future. It's very good. Link to. Yes. I thought it was very good. Watch it. Okay. okay. Declarations. Saying, I've not you... been given advice. Uh, I've read the key features, T's and C's, which we've glanced at before, but download those yep. and actually read them, please. You must read these things. It's very important. Yes. Um, have you opted out of your employer's pension scheme? So it's saying um, the in the UK now, your employer has to provide you with a pension unless you opt out. Um, so it's saying, have you done that to then do a Vanguard personal pension? Yes. And uh, my company has its company pension with Nest, which I hate Nest. They are horrible. They have high fees and bad performance. So I opted out of my own company pension uh, and have chosen this one instead. We're not saying necessarily opt out of your own pension. They can be great. And, you and know, they have matched funds from your employer. Exactly. But Nest are dreadful. So... Confirming you're acknowledging you've read all that stuff, you've read the declarations, you understand, you're happy to go ahead. I confirm. That. So it says total single payment at the bottom is the £500, total regular payment of zero, and I'm going to press submit. Do it, let's do it, let's open this SIP. I want my pension started. So it says we're setting up your account, let's see what happens The Vanguard next. Pixies are working behind the scenes to set me up. Oh, oh, OK. This might take a few minutes and we might need to, you know, speed this up. Or we, this out. we could just pad. <laughs> Should we sing? No. <laughs> Check uh, and make sure that we had confirmed the payment that we wanted to do that. So now it comes through to this next screen. You have opened a Vanguard personal Yes, pension. I have. I've so got my says, reference number. It says what happens next. It's open. They're going to process the instruction, meaning they're going to invest the money in the fund that you asked them to invest it in. Oh, you add a beneficiary, which is actually a very important step of this. You need, like, if you're married, family, 
like who inherits your pension it is a critical thing to do so do Can that immediately yes add yourself katie so we're going to go off and do that you don't need to watch us do that and then it's saying other things to consider do you want to transfer money in from other pensions do you want to add additional payments we're which not gonna... automating your additional payments so 100 pounds a month 200 pounds a month goes into your sip is an incredibly important thing to do the more you can automate the better yeah agreed so uh should we go to account overview to see what's happened in your account well that's uh, it we're done well, i guess we're, we're done, done. We? we're done we're going to go off and add a beneficiary that is how to open a vanguard self-invested personal pension if not all of this made sense come on rebel finance school and we will help you make sense of all of this love you